Hi there, my name is Matt Paris, and today I'm going to be showing you how to integrate your classes and enhance student creation using Canva. So if you log in to Canva, you're going to use your OriCountySchools.net. You want to use that Google account, okay? So if you go to Canva, you want to use that Google, that g.OriCountySchools.net uh, email to log in. This is important so that the website will recognize the first time you log in that you are an Ori County Schools teacher. That's how you get access to all the cool things with the educator account. So you want to check and see, first off, you have that free education pro account. How do you do this? So when you go inside and you can see some of this, the way the website's super easy to use, actually, it's very, um, very hands-on, very user-friendly. So you're going to check that dashboard on the side. You'll see these three bars over here. Click that and you'll see things open up. Check your dashboard to see if it has that free education account. If it'll say free, that's not what you want. You want it to say the education account. So next up, how do you create a class? Once you've got everything set up, you're ready to go, you've got your educator profile, even if you, once you've got your educator profile and you're ready to go, and even if you're not sure how this works, we're going to show you here. From the top corner on the homepage, you're going to click this little gear icon. Let me see the gears, the settings, we know this. So like the gear icon, go to account settings. All right, and if you're on mobile, you can select menu first and then your profile photo. I recommend doing this on the computer. That's such an easier user interface, personally for me, to create stuff. Maybe you have an iPad or a tablet, something bigger. You could do that with, but for me, I like doing it on the desktop. All right, so you want to click your profile uh, photo there, see account settings with the gear icon, get over to account settings. We're going to create a class this way. All right. So under billing and plans there on the left, you're going to... Under class, you're going to click create a new class. You can see this here. You're going to name it. This looks a lot like what we see in Google Classroom and Schoology, et cetera, in order to create a class. So if I'm making my class, uh, you know, I have, I have a second, third, fourth block. I want to make a second block Spanish one class, a third block Spanish one class, fourth block Spanish one class, just like you would do in Google Classroom so that your students will be able to join your class and access it. And you can kind of share and collaborate content that way. Once you've created your classes, of course, you want to invite your students. Again, a lot like Google Classroom, you can actually use Google Classroom, integrate with Canva in order to invite an already created class without having to select every single one, right? You can invite members through a link or a code or an email, just like you can with other things that work this way, okay? So from the drop down over here, make sure your class is selected. So if you've made a Mr. Paris Spanish 1 class or whatever your class may be, click that one and select invite members. So you can get a link here, you can get a code, email, you can even send it to an existing Google Classroom. Uh, for me, I find it's easier just to copy a code into the stream on Google Classroom so I can do it with my students uh, and make sure that everyone's on the same page at once. Any of those are accessible for you and something that you can choose to do to invite students to a class. You've got your class made, everybody's ready to see the possibilities with this website. Canva has so many cool things you can do. So if you want to show them an assignment, create or open an existing design for the assignment, you can obviously go up here, click share, click assignment, and choose where students would submit it to work and all of this. And you can make a new design for each student, right? So they have the ability to go in and work with, maybe they want to work with a template that you've already assigned them. Maybe you want them to work on something specific like a video or a different kind of presentation. All those options are there for you as you go to assign uh, your students a project within Canva. So you can also add the assignment instructions. You can see here it's attached to the assignment template where the students are going to see it. This is where the instructions go. That's what we write. We're telling you where to put the instructions. And then you want to click next and you can choose who the assignment's for. You can assign it to a certain class or to an individual student. And of course, students will be notified on their email that they have an assignment. Again, this works just like Google Classroom, Schoology, et cetera. So it's super user-friendly. And the kids are going to understand intuitively how this works, having worked with this kind of um, assignment template before. When they get an assignment, you can obviously grade it right, right there in Canva. You don't have to go to Google Classroom, anything else. It's going to be right there for you in Canva. So you go under Classwork. You can see their submission for each student. Give them feedback. You can request revisions. You can make revisions. You can do all sorts of things along with your students. Maybe they have a multi-step project that you're working on with them, or you want to give them specific notes on ways they can improve or take this out or add this. You can do all of that right there within Canva. Now, of course, when we're using something like Canva, we want to be aware of rigor. We want to be aware of crossing that rigor divide. We want to avoid using 
technology just as a way to use technology because we feel like we should. You know, you see at the beginning of this rubric here for designing student work, we've got all of these different components and all these different levels that start with recalling things, repeating things, memorization. Of course, we can do that on the blackboard or on pen and paper. You can even do it with technology, Google Classroom, with Google Slides. They can show off that they've memorized something. They can spit something back out at you. What we want to do with something like Canva, especially given the immense amount of possibilities that there are for creation and for student learning and presentation of that learning. We want to cross what's called the rigor divide here and go beyond recalling and following steps and just showing off facts that we know, restating things that we've already seen, showing off patterns that we've learned over and over. We want to cross that rigor divide into how can I show my teacher that I have learned this, apply it to something in the real world, find meaning, patterns, use that strategic thinking. Those are the things that we can do with something like Canva to allow us to cross that rigor divide. And at the very top, you see evaluate, create, extended thinking, producing, creating. So they can go from these simpler components of just recalling things to actually creating a project or a video or something that perhaps will take the things that they've learned and really apply them to the real life and perhaps show them a future where they can use and apply these skills even to the real world in the job market. And again, as I said, we don't want to just check that technology box. We want it to be purposeful, right? And you see this chart here that talks about substitution all the way to redefinition. So we want to go away from using technology just as a direct substitute. Well, my pen and paper is not working or my uh, my markers run dry, so I'm going to have the students, you know, make a Google slide with their vocabulary words and show me that they remember what they mean. I want to take it beyond that and really go into redesigning the task, really go into creating new tasks, things that we hadn't thought possible before, that the students hadn't thought possible before. And there's so many tools on Canva to allow you to do that, allow you to cross that divide between just enhancing what you're doing and really transforming the possibilities and allowing students to see beyond just rote memorization. How can I use this in the real world? What kinds of things can I create using what I've learned and expanding upon what I've learned? And that's really what we want to try to do. And Canva is an awesome tool to do that with. So again, I'm going to show you some of the student creation projects, some of the possibilities. Now, there are many of ways that you can use this in your classroom. And as I'm showing you some of these, obviously, I teach Spanish, but you can think of in your particular content area, how you might use some of these. First off, group brainstorming and group presentations. You'll see here there are so many different templates available for you. And once again, once you have that educator uh, profile, you're able to access all of these. Some of these, if you have the, the free account, you won't be able to access these, but you can access all of these. Now, look, you've got all these templates for a different kind of group project. And once you assign your students this project uh, within the classroom portion of Canva, really the possibilities from there are endless and really up to the students because they can get together and not only use these group project templates, but many of the other templates that I'll show you to collaborate together, much like they can on, on Google or Schoology, but within Canva to adjust and make things work for their particular project as they prepare to show you what they've learned. Uh, my colleagues and I did much the same thing over the last few weeks preparing for this uh, professional development. And honestly, it's super user friendly, very easy to use in order to get together with the group and collaborate within Canva. Again, you have all these graphical representations and concept map abilities in Canva. These are some of my favorite things. If you look here, you've got all these infographics that you can use. These are infographic templates. And I promise if you look through, you can also search up here within the templates for education infographics for certain uh, things that might give you a start for your particular content area. You can see pretty much everything. You can search science. You can search English, math, languages, social studies. You'll see there's things for maps and uh, child development, English literature. There's really limitless possibilities here of things you can start with and open up. You can also, of course, make a blank infographic, but for me, I swear there's so many different templates that you can use that it's almost worth it to go through and see if you can find something uh, that works for you. Also, graphic organizers. 
know, graphic organizers are something that you find yourself using a lot in your class to connect ideas, to connect certain things, cause and effect, or to talk about uh, things that are passing through time, et cetera. However you use these, I guarantee you there is something here to uh, help your students show you what they've learned or to help you uh, help your students learn along the way. Of course, you can use these in order to help your students learn, but uh, a lot of these you can assign for the students or, or give them an assignment within uh, Canva to make a graphic organizer or an infographic, and you will be surprised and shocked at the things that they're able to do within this very visual medium to show you how they've learned uh, the concepts you've taught in your class. So down here we've got videos. Now I teach a uh, I teach a broadcast club. We make a news broadcast, and we have all sorts of things that we do with that here at Socasty. So videos, of course, one of my favorite things to get involved with and see all the cool tools that Canva has to offer for making videos. You see, there's all sorts of things you can do. You can make uh, video messages, Facebook videos, collages. It's set up to make YouTube videos. However you want to use videos or creating videos within Canva for your students to show off what they've learned. I guarantee you the TikTok generation, the Snapchat, Facebook generation loves these video templates using these to make things to show their teachers what they have learned and to really take it to the next level. This is crossing that rigor divide. Not only am I telling my teacher exactly what I've memorized and learned, I'm showing my teacher how I'm taking what they have taught me and applying it to some other higher idea or a, a something that they can show you uh, within these video templates here available for them on Canva. So those are very powerful tools, and I promise the kids love showing off their videos. One of the other really cool things, aside from videos that I've found in Canva, is this storybooks option. So many possibilities here. You'll see all these templates that are available for you to use to create a storybook. Now, if you open one of these up, you'll see that it has the pages already set out. You can choose your characters. You can adjust them. Now, you can move and change and edit almost everything on these pages. That goes for all these templates, anything you see in Canva if you're not familiar with it. So you can really take this and run with it. Uh, and your students can create a, an awesome storybook. They can obviously change the titles and the characters and the what the, what the writing says inside, but there are so many cool opportunities for your students to really take things to the next level with these storybooks, much like the videos, but you have your students that are more artistic and visual and like to create like this. I think the storybook option is really cool for them to show off uh, what they've learned in your class and to even maybe take it to the next level. I know in Spanish, we do a lot of storytelling and a lot of uh, repetition with things that we've learned and talking about who we are and et cetera. These are awesome tools to take that sort of learning to the next level because students can not only read, they can create things in the target language. So I find that really interesting. But how, what any sort of content that you teach, I think there would be a cool use for something like this, these storybook templates. Last two things I really wanna show you quickly here are really for you teachers. You've got teacher accounts in the Canva Design School, and I really wanna show you those both really quickly here. So this is just for teachers. This is to help teacher resources here. Uh, first and foremost, if you see here, it says get verified for teachers. If you're having trouble getting your free uh, educator account, this is uh, one place to go here and make sure that you can get verified. It'll take, I think it took me a few hours the first time I had trouble with it um, to get verified and make sure everything was straight. Since then, I haven't had anybody that I've known really have a problem with this. But if you do, you can click this get verified and make sure that they can verify you're an Horry County School employee. And, are eligible to get that uh, educator account to have access to all this cool stuff. All right, so there are all sorts of cool things here where you can ask questions and see how things work, create a classroom, et cetera. If you want to get a little more involved, even than what we've gone through today, there is a whole Canva design school. Uh, so there are even more resources here to help you. There's a whole lineup of things you can do to even from the most basic to some very uh, template specific things you can do if you want to work on the storybooks, if you want to work on the infographics or the videos, et cetera. There's all sorts of cheat sheets and things to get you started, to show you how to edit on here, to show you how to find certain elements that you're looking for, and even beyond. There's some things on here I was looking at, I was learning even about today. So there are so many options available for you to use here on Canva that it's super exciting. And I hope you're able to get some ideas from what we have shown you so far today. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for even more videos.